Hello everyone and thanks for joining me. My name is Alejandro Aguirre and I'm going to present a joint work with Shinai Katsumata from the National Institute of Informatics in Tokyo. So our motivation behind this work is studying uh, the notion of weakest precondition uh, in a formal manner. So in a very simplified way, uh, in program verification, weakest preconditions can be used to check that a program satisfies a whole triple. So we have a program that, are, that is specified by a whole triple P as a precondition and Q as a postcondition. Then uh, this whole triple is satisfied only if P implies the weakest precondition of F and Q. And this is a very useful technique that can be applied in a lot of settings. Uh, for instance, for programs with side effects such as non-termination or probabilities. And uh, it also supports uh, quantitative notions of predicates, so not only uh, binary predicates, but predicates that have real values, for instance. Uh, being a bit more concrete, we can see a program as a map, F, from memories to memories. And what WP does, it computes inverse image of predicates. So we have a predicate Q, which is a subset of M, then uh, the WP of F and Q is the inverse image of Q uh, along F. And crucially, uh, this WP is composable, meaning first, uh, the WP of skip and Q is just Q, and secondly, if they have a programming composition, F composed with G, then the WP of F composed with G is the composition of the individual's uh, WPs uh, in a contravariant manner. If we want to add effects to this setting, one common manner of adding effects is by using a monad. So we assume that our computational effects are captured by monad T, and now we want to compute WP of F and Q, but now we cannot directly apply the inverse image because Q is a subset of M, but it's not a subset of TM. So we first need to have some way of mapping Q to a predicate over TM, and this is what T dot does, which is uh, what we call the lifting of T. And then in this case, what WP does is it first applies the lifting to Q, and then it computes the inverse image to, of T dot Q. So now we also want to uh, ask whether WP is composable. But now the question is a bit different because skip is not longer uh, the identity program, it's actually the unit of the monad T. And if composed with G, it's no longer normal composition, it's uh, classic composition. So instead of having uh, G composed with F, we have G sharp composed with F, where G sharp is the class lifting of G. And this is the uh, question behind our work, and it's what we try to answer. So in this talk, the contributions we present are a characterization of WPs in a general effectful setting, using the notion of vibration in category theory. And we are able to characterize uh, WPs exactly as some uh, special kind of liftings of monads that I will uh, explain later. Then we apply these uh, techniques to the domain vibrations, which are vibrations that capture normal notions of predicates, such as binary predicates or real value predicates. Um, I'll also show how to combine monads to uh, compose effects. And finally, I instantiate all this theory to uh, concrete examples to recover transformers in the literature. We begin by studying weakest preconditions in a general setting. And for this, we're going to use vibrations. So a vibration is a situation in which we can take the inverse of an object in P along a morphism in C. Being a bit more concrete, for every object in C, we can define its fiber, which is denoted by P sub x, when x is, is the object. And this px is a poset of 
objects that get mapped to X are morphisms that get mapped to the identity of X. And if you have a morphism in C going from say X to Y, then you can compute a functor from the fiber over Y to the fiber over X. And this functor is going to compute inverse images. This is summarized by the diagram. If we have F going from X to Y and we have Q above Y, then we can compute the inverse image, which is denoted F star Q. And the morphism in P going from F star Q to Q, we denoted by bar F, and we also call it the Cartesian lifting determined by F and Q. So some examples of vibration, for instance, we can look into the vibration from the category of predicates and the category of sets, where the vibration just maps a predicate to its base set. Or we could look into the uh, forgetful factor from topological spaces to set, and also the forgetful factor from the category of binary relations to set square. So if we want to add effects into this setting, uh, we do this using monads. So first we have a monad T over C that captures the computational effect of, of our programs. And then we define a monad T dot on P that needs to satisfy the uh, commutativ commutativity sorry, of these three diagrams. So what the first diagram expresses is that if we have a predicate uh, Q over X, then T dot Q is a predicate over TX. And then the second and the third diagram, they require that P maps the unit and the multiplication of the T dot monad to the unit and multiplication of the T monad. And all this data packed together, it forms a triple that we call a Dijkstra structure, which is a setting which we can define weakest preconditions. And we do this as follows. If we have a Dijkstra structure uh, defined by P, T, and T dot, then the weakest precondition, WP, is exactly the inverse image uh, induced by the vibration. So WP of F and Q is F star of T dot Q. And once we have defined the WP, we can also define whole triples. So a whole triple is satisfied if uh, P implies WP of F and Q. So now, of course, we want to look into composability. So we can think of two programs, F going from X to TY and Z going from Y to TZ. And in the category C, we can compose them uh, using class decomposition. And we have a, a predicate Q over Z in P. Then there's two ways of computing the inverse image. We can just compute the inverse image of the composition, which is the lower path in the diagram or we can compute first the inverse image along G and then the inverse image along F, which is the upper path in the diagram. And by universality of uh, the inverse image, uh, there's always going to be this uh, implication, but in general, there's not going to be an equality. So of course, uh, we would like to uh, characterize the cases in which we have an exact equality between these two uh, inverse images. And uh, this uh, uh, equality, which is has composability, is satisfied if and only if uh, the Dijkstra structure is Cartesian. So we require that T dot is fibered, and furthermore, that it satisfies these two extra conditions. So the first uh, condition uh, requires that uh, the unit of the T dot monad is not only mapped to the unit of the T monad by P, but it's also the Cartesian morphism above eta. And same for the uh, multiplication of the T dot monad. So in general, uh, uh, these kind of Cartesian liftings are not very common. So for these monads uh, on this table, uh, this is actually an exhaustive uh, list of the Cartesian liftings. So this is the uh, maybe monad, this is the uh, power m no, non empty power set monad, the distribution monad and monad composition. So you don't need to read the table right now, I'm going to explain some of the examples, but the point here is that if you want to 
be able to exhaustively list liftings for this monad, then we need some techniques that allow us to to prove that there are no no more liftings. And this is what we're going to do in the second part of the talk for some specific kind of vibrations. So now we study the concrete setting of uh, domain vibrations from a lag slice category. So a lag slice category uh, is defined as follows. We first have a category C and we pick an object omega and we assume that every home set with omega as a, a codomain is ordered. And we further assume that pre-composition is monotonic. So an easy manner to uh, obtain these conditions are by assuming that omega is ordered itself and that the home set order is just the point by order of functions. And then we build a slice category C slash omega that has as objects morphisms in C that have omega as a codomain. So for instance, I going from X to omega or J going from Y to omega. And as morphisms, uh, morphisms in C between the domains, so F from X to Y, that makes this diagram commute laxly, meaning that this path of the diagram is less than this path of the diagram. And this is known as a domain vibration because D maps uh, morphisms to its uh, to their domain. So I gets mapped to X and J gets mapped to Y. And now we want to uh, look at uh, Dijkstra structures in this setting. And to do this, we first look at monotone algebras because there's a tight connection. So a monotone algebra is a pair of a functor F and an algebra of F that preserves the ordering of home sets in the following way. So we have I less than J. Uh, then uh, the two ways of going from Fx to omega, one uh, through I and the other one through J are ordered in the same manner as uh, this, these two. So if I is less than J, then this path of the diagram is less than this path of the diagram. And we have two monotone algebras, uh, O um, an algebra of F and O uh, prime an algebra of G. Then a morphism between these two algebras is a natural transformation between the functors that makes this diagram commute exactly. And now this, uh, this data, both the uh, monotone algebras and the morphisms of monotone algebras from a monoidal category that has as unit the identity functor and the identity algebra, and as uh, operation the uh, algebra composition and functor composition. And now the uh, the point of this is that there's a monoidal isomorphism between the, this category of uh, monotone algebras and the category of fifth of fiber functors and Cartesian two cells between them. Now I'm not going to give details of what this uh, category is. Uh, the, ma the main point is that this is a category of endo functors, and a monoid object in this category is exactly a pair of a monad uh, T and a Cartesian lifting of this monad. So now we can find the monoid object in the category of emulge and get a bijective correspondence uh, between Cartesian liftings and a special kind of algebras. And this monoid object in emulge is exactly a pair of a, a monad and an eilenberg moore uh, monotone T algebra. So now the, the point of this slide is that there's a, a bijective correspondence between a monotone EM monotone T algebras and Cartesian liftings. So to construct uh, Cartesian liftings, it's enough to find monotone T algebras, which are easier to find. Uh, but sometimes we also want to uh, combine effects. So for instance, may, we may want to combine non-determinism and probabilities on non-termination and non-determinism. And the way this is usually done is uh, by finding a distributive law. So distributive law is just a, between two monads TS, it's just a way, a natural transformation that allows us to swap the order of the monads. So it goes from ST to TS. And this is enough to define uh, a composite monad T uh, alpha S. If uh, 
alpha satisfies these uh, coherence conditions. So now ideally we would like to be able to construct Cartesian liftings for the composite monad from Cartesian liftings of the individual monads and therefore from algebras of the individual monads. And in fact this is possible as long as the algebra satisfy an extra condition. So the extra condition is that if we have an algebra in monotone T algebra and in monotone S algebra, they induce a Cartesian lifting of the composite monad. If and only if these uh, two algebras commute nicely with uh, the distributive law. So we have S T omega, there's two ways of eliminating S and T. One is by first uh, applying T and then S, and the other one is by swapping T and S and applying first S and then T. And if these two uh, paths of the pentagon commute, then we can build a Cartesian lifting for the composite uh, monad. So now we leave behind the more abstract part of the presentation and we look at look into some examples. We start with examples in the category of slices over 2, where 2 is a set 2.7, point set, 0, 1, with the expected order. And set slash 2 can be seen as simply the category of binary predicates that has as morphisms functions that preserve the truth of the predicates. So the first example we look into is a partiality monad, sometimes called maybe monad, that can be used to model non-determinism, sorry, non-termination or errors. And uh, there are exactly two in monotone algebras over two, which are tot for totality and par for partiality. And this induced two Cartesian liftings and therefore two composable WP transformers. But instead of looking at the WP transformers, we look into the Hort triples, which are a bit easier to understand. So the Hort triple PFQ is satisfied in the tot setting if for any input in P, the output is not an error and it satisfies Q. So it's like a total interpretation of the whole triple. And the partial interpretation of the whole triple is that if the input satisfies X and the output is not an error, then the output satisfies Q. But if the output is an error, then it does not matter. We can also look into the non-empty power set monad that is used to model non-determinism. So P plus X maps X to the non-empty subsets of X. And there are also two M E monotone algebras over two. So one is MUST that models MUST non-determinism and the other one is MAY. And those induce two Cartesian liftings that are summarized in the table. So the whole triple PFQ is satisfied in the MAY setting if for any input in P, there is a possible execution of F such that it, its output is in Q. And the mass interpretation of the whole triple is that if the input satisfies P, then any possible execution uh, has an output that satisfies Q. This uh, example can be also seen in a similar manner in the probabilistic setting. So we also have two algebras of the uh, distribution monad, P must and P may. So probabilistic uh, may, uh, it interprets uh, the whole triple PFQ as follows. So if X satisfies P, then the output of the program on X satisfies Q with non-zero probability. And uh, the probabilistic mass interpretation of the whole triple is that if the input satisfies P, then the output needs to satisfy Q with probability 1. And now we look into more complex examples of slices over the positive reals. So the category set slash zero infinity can be seen as the category that has as objects real valued predicates and as morphisms of, as always, functions that preserve uh, this uh, triangle laxly. So we start by looking again into the distribution monad, but in this case we need to find a real uh, valued algebra. And one possible example of this is the expected value. 
which uh, satisfies a monotonicity conditions. And now we are not going to look exhaustively into algebras of D. Uh, we just consider the expected value. But the idea is that the expected value allows us to recover a transformer that is known in the literature as the weakest pre-expectation, as introduced by McIver and Morgan. And the uh, weakest pre-expectation uh, of a program F and a predicate I computes the expected value of I over the output distribution of F for some uh, input X. We can also combine uh, effects, for instance, probabilities and non-determinism. This is a well-known problem. And for this, we define the monad ID of index distributions, which is a, another way of defining a monad of distributions. But the point of ID is that it has a distributive law over P, which D does not. And for ID, we can also define the monotone ID algebra of expected value. And if you combine this expected value with sub, which is a, an algebra of P, then we obtain uh, the WP defined by this equation. So if we have a program F with uh, probabilities and non-determinism, and we have a predicate I, then the WP of F and I computes the supreme of the expected values of any possible output. And now, finally, we want to use our techniques to reconstruct the expected random transformer that was introduced by Kaminsky and others uh, to reason about runtimes of probabilistic programs. So our setting is a bit simplified uh, compared to theirs because we do not consider loops. But in any case, the idea is that they have a, a language, a first order language with a probabilistic assignments, non deterministic choice, a conditionals, and also a tick operator to introduce a time into a program. And the ERT transformer uh, maps functions between memories and real values to functions between memories and real values, as summarized by this table. I'm going to go quickly through this. Uh, but the point is that, of course, it's compositional. So ERT of uh, C1 composed with C2 is the composition of ERTs. And also, they introduce cost uh, for uh, assignments and for conditionals. So now to model this in our setting, uh, we need to combine three monads. First, a monad of cost which just uh, is a writer monad that adds a natural uh, valued cost to a program. And also the monad of probabilities and determinism as in the previous example. And we develop a denotational model of their language. So we have a, a set V of values, a, an object V of values, and states or memories are a map from variables to values. And then the semantics of a program is a map from memories to uh, T memories. And we can reconstruct their transformer from three algebras. So for the cost monad, we just use addition as an algebra. So we have a natural number and a real number, then you can produce a real number by addition. And for a ID, we use uh, expected value, and for P, we use supreme. And now, using these three algebras, we can construct a WP, which is summarized by this table, and that it almost coincides with the uh, ERT transformer. It just needs an extra transformation, so we need to in uh, instrument the code with ticks, because the ERT language does not have a uh, explicit ticks for uh, assignment and if. But once we do this transformation, then we can show that for any program C, 
our WP of the accounting transformation of C coincides exactly with the expected runtime of C. In the paper, there's more material that I have not been able to cover. So uh, we first studied how to generalize our settings to K vibrations, where K is a subcategory of POS. And the idea here is that if the fibers are not posets but are something stronger, then we can get WP transformers that have nicer properties as uh, mid preservation or continuity. We also look into how to dualize some of our results to study strongest post conditions. And we, uh, we show how to compute the WPs induced by generic effects as uh, introduced by Plotkin and Power. And there's also more examples we have not been able to cover for time reasons. So, for instance, one example is to study higher moments of cost in uh, probabilistic programs, which is a transformer presented in a paper by Kura and others. And we also study vibrations that are not domain vibrations. Some related work that I should mention, uh, perhaps the more relevant one is the work by Hasuo. Uh, so in his setting, uh, what he studies corresponds uh, in our setting to Cartesian liftings along uh, C slash T omega. So our increment with respect to this work is that our object of truth values is not T omega, but in general, any omega. Uh, some other work is the work by uh, Goncharov and Shreda, where they study predicates by the use of what they call innocent monads. And some other work also is the work uh, by Hino and others, where they study predicate transformers using relative monads. And finally, uh, I should mention the work by uh, Maillard and others uh, on their Dijkstra monads, which is, uh, it has a, an intersection with our work uh, that we will discuss in the final version of the paper. So now to conclude, uh, I have presented a way of characterizing composability of WPs in an effectful setting as pullbacks of Cartesian liftings of monads. Also, I have shown techniques of how to construct these Cartesian liftings from algebras of the individual monads. And I have shown that algebras of the individual monads can be composed into algebras of the composite monads and therefore to construct Cartesian liftings for the composite monads. And finally, I have shown that all these abstract techniques are actually applicable to reconstruct uh, transformers that have appeared in the recent literature. And with this, I would like to conclude the talk and thank everyone that has watched.